These are the new tapered screw style offset cam clamps, which will be described in this video. Good morning, I'm John Manier from AccuSlice. This video will be describing our offset cam clamps. We currently have two models of the offset cam clamps. This first model was developed about five, six years ago and contains an offset cam clamp with a flat, straight side. We currently introduced a new model in which the side is both tapered and has a screw-like surface on the top edge. This enables the board to be clamped more securely against the sacrificial fence on our AccuSlice system. In this video, we'll be describing these new offset cam clamps. I've used our standard offset cam clamps with a straight edge for a number of applications in many of our previous videos. And I use these to uh, make some uh, uh, inlay strips you know, for woodworking and also for making some thin laminated strips for uh, bindings and purflings on guitars. And these were made using a jig such as this, in which I have a number of these offset cam clamps. And these are used to clamp layers of boards together while they're gluing up. So this is a great technique for gluing small strips together uh, in a, a jig for gluing them up. And I said I made a number of these uh, pieces, such as this very thin uh, multi-layered strip for a, a binding, for a perfling for a guitar, and also a number of my uh, inlay strips, a variety of different designs. And these are all shown in previous videos. And I've made a number of jigs over the years to uh, use these offset cam clamps. You know, jigs such as this long system with a number of uh, offset cam clamps to clamp or screw system together either for gluing up or slicing on our AccuSlice system. You know, systems for cutting round or uh, hexagonal shaped uh, segmented discs such as these two uh, uh, sacrificial fences. And a variety of techniques such as these sliding offset cams and then also the uh, screw type uh, inserts for mounting the uh, offset cam clamps. So a variety of techniques for a number of different applications which were shown in numerous videos in the past. But in this video we'll be describing these new offset cam clamps with a screw type tapered surface. And these offer a unique advantage that they not only clamp the board against the sacrificial fence, but they actually pull it against the sacrificial fence to give you a much tighter joint and give you more accurate cuts. So in this video we'll be describing the design of these offset cam clamps, the manufacturing of these clamps on a CNC mill, the uh, actual theory of operation, how and why they work, and then we'll be showing some actual applications of these for various projects. The offset cams will be machined on a vertical CNC mill. In order to machine the offset cams, the CNC mill must first be programmed with the software program to provide the CNC mill with the instructions it needs to machine these parts. I am using the Fusion 360 software to both design the offset cams and to generate the G-code program for the CNC mill. I begin by using the design features of the Fusion 360 software to lay out the overall shape of the offset cams. In order to draw the offset shape of the cam, I use a center drilled hole as a pivot point, and starting at the beginning edge of the offset cam, I gradually increase the radius by two thousandths of an inch for every one degree of clockwise rotation around the center point, starting at a radius of 0.75 inches and ending at 1.345 inches. After the remaining portions of the offset cam are drawn into the Fusion 360 design software with the correct dimensions, I then transfer the design into the manufacturing feature of the Fusion 360 software package. I then set up the various tools needed and designed the various tool paths required to machine the offset cams. I then used the simulation feature of the Fusion 360 software to view the tool paths that I designed for this part. The simulation software enables me to verify that the offset cam will be machined to meet my requirements and eliminate any errors before I start the actual machining operation. First step is to carve out the overall shape of the offset cam using a one quarter inch diameter end mill. I then next installed a five degree tapered end mill to machine a five degree taper around the outside of the offset cam. I turn the offset cam upside down and then using a one quarter inch ball end end mill, I machined around the circumference of the offset cam, decreasing the depth of the ball end mill as I machined around the circumference of the offset cam. This downward machining motion machines the screw like edge that is needed for the offset cams. Then I used a one half inch end mill to machine the countersink for the screw that will later be used to attach the offset cam to the sacrificial fence. I then used the post processor function of the Fusion 360 software to generate the G-code software. 
is G-Code software is a program that the CNC mill will use to actually machine the offset cams. The G-Code program generated by Fusion 360 was downloaded to the CNC mill. The offset cams are being machined from a two and a quarter by five and a quarter by one quarter inch thick aluminum plate. Two one quarter inch diameter holes were drilled into this plate to permit it to be attached to a mounting plate jig on the CNC mill vise. This aluminum plate is then attached to the mounting plate jig using two one quarter inch hex head screws. Then as shown previously in the Fusion 360 simulation software, the overall shape of this offset cam is machined to shape using a one quarter inch diameter end mill. This is the shape of our standard offset cam. To machine these new tapered offset cams, I then switched to a 5 degree tapered 1 quarter inch diameter end mill to mill a 5 degree taper around the entire outside shape of the offset cam. I'm now ready to machine the screw tapered bevel on the offset cams as shown in this example. The bevel starts at the top beginning surface here at a zero depth and tapers down to 0.15 inches deep on the opposite end. I'm using a 1 quarter inch ball end end mill to machine this bevel. To machine these new tapered screw style offset cams, I'm using two jigs, one for the bottom surface as just demonstrated, and a second jig for the opposite or top surface. These offset cams were first machined with a five degree taper. So to machine this taper, I first turn the cam upside down and machine this taper as just demonstrated. Now I'm turning the offset cam upside down, mounting it in the second jig in order to machine the screw taper. I first attach the upside down offset cam to the second jig using the two one quarter inch hex head screws. I will just be tapering this offset cam starting at this first edge at a zero depth over to the second point at a depth of 0.15 inches. I'm just machining this front edge of this offset cam. Then using a one quarter inch diameter ball end mill, I'll machine the required taper on the offset cam. Here's the finished tapered screw style offset cam. The tapered screw style offset cams encompass two unique features. First, a five degree taper on the side or edge of the offset cam, and then a rotating depth taper, which creates a screw shape of the outer circumference of the offset cam as it is rotated. This 5 degree taper on the outside edge of the offset cam creates a slightly pointed surface which can dig into the edge of the wood being clamped and prevents it from slipping or sliding as it is turned and clamped in place. Here you can see the screw pointed edge which tapers downward and will clamp or pull down on the board as the offset cam clamp is being rotated. Here's a typical setup using two of the new screw style offset cam clamps. It consists of an MDF sacrificial board or fence with a one quarter inch wide wood cleat on the bottom edge of the MDF board and a series of brass screw inserts into which the offset cam clamps will be attached. Two one quarter inch by 20 thread per inch screws are used to attach the offset cam clamps to the brass inserts. I normally leave these screws holding the offset cam clamps slightly loose. The board is placed on the MDF board with one edge against the bottom cleat. The two offset cam clamps are adjusted to enable them to clamp onto the edge of the board as these offset cam clamps are rotated. Here you can see the result of turning the offset cam clamps to force the board against the cleat on the bottom edge of the sacrificial fence. Then as I tighten the offset cam clamp screws, the board is further forced tight against the sacrificial fence with no visible gap. This board does not move since the pointed edge of the offset cam clamps prevents it from slipping or sliding. Here's another view showing the clamping action as the cam is rotated and then the uh, center screw tightened to force the board against the sacrificial fence. Here's another example which was shown in a previous video in which I used three of the offset cam clamps to attach a walnut board to the sacrificial fence on the AccuSlice carriage in order to cut some staves. This 18 inch long walnut board is tight against the sacrificial fence the entire length of the board. 
I'm just going to demonstrate how we attach the board to the sacrificial fence using these new style offset uh, cams. And so I have the cams adjusted to the right uh, size. And I put my board on here. So what I normally do is I loosen the screws on these cams. You know, maybe just a, a quarter turn just so they slide easily. So they're smooth movement on all of them. So they're not real tight. So it's maybe a an eighth to a quarter turn, you know, past finger tight. And I put my board on here. And then what I do is uh, I tighten both ends. I just uh, push the board against the fence and then tighten the clamp slightly. Do that on both ends and then in the middle. And the taper on these uh, offset cams forces the board towards the fence. You see there's almost no gap between them. So I do tighten it up a little bit more. Then as a final step, I tighten the screw. And that pulls it in even more. So that is really tight against the sacrificial fence now. So it's actually you know, being screwed twice against the sacrificial fence. And now there's actually no gap between the board and the sacrificial fence. That's just as tight as you can get it. It's almost like it was glued and clamped in place. And that'll give you real nice accurate uh, cuts for the system. So between the angle being set accurately and the board being securely fastened to the carriage, the uh, sacrificial fence with no gaps, you should get nice cuts on your board. Here I'm slicing staves for producing a segment stave bowl as shown in my previous video on the rotating carriage. I received several requests from people wanting to uh, slice a three-quarter inch white board in half to make jewelry boxes. They didn't want to use a three-quarter inch thick board and run it through a planer to get it down thicker or to a thinner board to uh, just waste a lot of wood. But uh, it would be nice to be able to cut a three-quarter inch board in half to get two three-eighth inch boards. And I can do that with my AccuSize system and this carriage and these new offset uh, cams. Uh, so what I have here is a piece of poplar. It's about 5 inches wide by 24 inches long, and I'm going to be cutting in half. And I'm using my automated AccuSlice system because I have a, a 6 foot rail on here and it's all set up, so it's just convenient for me to use it. But this can be done on our standard AccuSlice system just as easily. So what I'm going to be doing, I mount this to my sacrificial fence. I'm using three clamps to hold it in place. And the board has actually had a slight warp to it, maybe a 30 second inch warp. And I was able to pull that in using these uh, uh, offset cam clamps with the uh, tapered uh, screw uh, cover. So I was actually able to pull it back against the fence and eliminate most, if not all, of that uh, warping of the board. So that worked out quite nicely. So next I'm going to run this board through the bandsaw blade and cut it in half right down the middle. So my system's all set up. I'm using a half inch wide blade, eight teeth per inch, and I'll be cutting it 10 inches a minute. And I align it and the, the blade is uh, slightly off center and uh, it should be cutting the board exactly in half. And then I release my offset cam clamps. using offset cam clamps is, you know, I don't have to glue my board to the sacrificial fence or use tape. It's a nice quick way to uh, not only install it, but also to remove it from the sacrificial fence. For this next project, I have a, a segmented disc. This is 18 segments of uh, Catalox wood, and uh, it's about three-quarter inch thick, and I want to slice this in half because I'm making a segmented egg and I want this to be the top and bottom of the egg. So I want two pieces of equal, equal distance or equal thickness. And uh, the system is nice because I can mount it in a special jig I made. This is a jig which has two points here to mount my wood. And then I can uh, adjust my thickness here and then tighten it and then of course lock it in place. 
One of the issues with the, uh, these offset cams is that you can't cut close to one quarter inch away from the sacrificial fence. Because that has to clear the uh, offset cam. This cam is about three, uh, eight quarter inch thick, so you need to be able to sh be sure you, uh, you clear that uh, offset cam when you're cutting it through the bandsaw. Uh, so it, it's not probably not the best system to use to make you know thin segments. But if you just wanted to cut one segment, one thin segment off of a thick piece of wood, that would make sense. Or in this case, I want to cut it in half, so each half would be about three eighths of an inch thick, so that uh, will work quite nicely. So what I do here is I put it right on my two spaces on the bottom. You know, clamp in place once again. And then uh, once it's clamped, I can tighten my offset cam clamp to pull it tight against the sacrificial fence. And then it's all ready to cut on the bandsaw. So I adjusted my bandsaw blade so it's cutting halfway through my segmented disc. And again, I'm using a half inch wide blade, eight teeth per inch. And this is mounted on my standard AccuSlice system with a, a three foot rail. Then I release my offset cam. And I have two segmented discs, exactly the same thickness. Now there may be times that I just need to cut off a single segmented thin disc to use a, as an accent piece for a, a segmented bowl or egg that I'm making. So I have a, a about an inch, over an inch, inch and a quarter thick segmented disc here. And I just want to call it, cut off one or two, you know, maybe 50,000 inch thick segmented disc. Uh, so I can do that quite easily on this system. But keep in mind, I cannot cut closer than one quarter inch from the sacrificial fence because of the offset cam uh, spacing and also these spacers on the bottom. So again, it's the same procedure. Take my segmented disc, mount it on my system, and I have to readjust my cam position. It's a little too far away. And as always, I leave the, the uh, screw a little bit loose. You know, get my board. Clamp in position, and there's a little gap now between the uh, segmented board and my sacrificial fence. But as I tighten it up now, that, that gap goes away, so I tighten it in quite nicely. So I can mount this on my system. And I'm ready to slice a couple boards. So my system's all set up, again, using a half inch wide blade, eight teeth per inch, and I adjust my system. Usually I want to cut off a board just to give me a flat square surface, so I'm cutting off maybe a oh, 20,000, 25,000 of an inch of this segment disc, just as a scrap piece. And that'll be my first cut. This uh, offset cam sticks above a little bit, so I've got to raise my blade guides a little bit here to clear that. And let me go and cut my uh, first piece. Now I release my sight mag jig clamps. I rotate my index wheel one full revolution for the curve of the blade. And let's cut a board, uh, let's cut a board 50,000 inch thick, which would be two revolutions for my indexer. Okay. And then after that I'll cut a board, I'll cut one 25,000 inch thick. <laughs> So I can keep cutting down as long as I don't cut down to uh, uh, less than a quarter inch thick. Make sure I clear the offset cam. These will be used in feature rings in a future segment of project. This concludes this video on these new tapered screw style offset cam clamps. For additional details, please visit our website. And once again, thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions or comments, please give us a call or drop us an email. We're always happy to hear from you.